Okay, so what kind of circuit is this? If we look here, we have a battery connected to a battery, connected to a switch, which happens to be open, connected to a light bulb, light bulb, light bulb, back to the battery. So what kind of circuit is this? Good, a series. But wait a minute, why aren't the light bulbs lit? Because we have an open circuit as well. As soon as we close the uh, as soon as we close the switch, we see that the light bulbs are really faintly lit, which is good. So the first characteristic we're going to measure of this is voltage. Now, I have my handy dandy uh, digital voltmeter and it will show potential voltage right here. Currently it's reading incredibly low. But if I wanted to measure the total voltage, all the voltage, I could clip it here and here and measure, measure the voltage across the batteries. But if that's a 1.5 volt battery and that's a 1.5 volt battery, what should the voltage of them together be? Let's check it out. Okay, I've, I've clipped uh, my voltmeter onto this post and to this post, and I see that my total voltage is 2.96, let's say. But I haven't even closed the battery, uh, the closed the circuit yet. You know what? It really doesn't matter. 2.92. So, that is the total voltage. If I were to clip my uh, voltmeter here and here, I'd be able to measure the voltage across battery, uh, light bulb number one. wonder what that, light, what that voltage is. I've clipped my uh, probes up to light bulb number two, and the voltage is 0.94. What do you think the voltage for light bulb number two is going to be? I've clipped my voltmeters up to light bulb number two, and the voltage is 0.8. 9 or 0.9. Light bulb number 3. I've clipped my voltmeter up to light bulb number 3 and the potent voltage is 1.11. Now hopefully this makes sense. We have seen that light bulb 1 consumed 9.94 volts and light bulbs 2 consumed 0.9 volts, and light bulb 3 consumed 1.11 volts. But the rule is that in a series circuit, you add up the power consumption of each one of the components. Now we know that the battery was able to supply about 2.95 volts, and it follows. If we go back to your water analogy, the battery is kind of like a pump supplying a pressure of, let's say, about 3 volts. And when the water goes into light bulb number one, it consumes about one volt of that pressure, leaving two volts to go to light bulb number two, and then one volt to go to light bulb three, and then technically zero volts to go back to the battery, which pumps more volts out. And the voltage rule follows. Now I've set uh, the logger pro in order to capture current as well, and the current is measured by this box, which I've attached to a switch. Normally I make my students jump up and down. They know that they have to open the circuit in order to measure current. Well, this is a convenient way for me to do, it, to do that. So wherever I put this switch is where I'm going to be measuring the current. Now this is a series circuit, still it's the same circuit, but there's no electrons flowing because I haven't closed that switch. So the very first measurement I'm going to make is the current going into light bulb one. And so you'll notice the current is 0 0.057 amps at light bulb 1. But what happens when I move my amp meter to here so I find out the current going into light bulb number 2? The current going into light bulb number 2 is 0 0.056 amps. What about the current going into light bulb 3? The current going into light bulb 3 is 0 0.057 amps. Two seconds. When it comes to current of a series circuit, the fact that there's only one path for electrons to flow down pretty much indicates all the electrons that leave the battery are going to go see light bulb number one. And since there's no way that they can divert, all of the electrons are then going to go see light bulb number two. And then they go see light bulb number three and then finally make it back to the battery. Thus, proving the current rule for series circuits.